Thanks, Sandrea, and thanks to all the organizers for uh, uh, giving us the opportunity to present. So I'm not going to be talking about uh, my own work here, but uh, as uh, Andrea mentioned, I am speaking on behalf of the Center for Health Analytics uh, at the Data Science Institute that uh, Lena Mumkin and myself uh, put there. And I'm excited to be telling you about a data challenge that we have launched and orchestrated over the last couple of weeks that we called a Columbia University effort for predicting infections with data. And uh, this is this is this is really a, aimed a, at leveraging the a, the diverse skills and ways of thinking about problems within the data science institute community across the a, across the Columbia campuses and a, in order to both generate actual results that might have immediate impact but also to seed some longer term collaborations and uh, integration of different uh, different methodologies now um, the it, it's very difficult to uh, to make predictions especially about the future this may seem uh, a triviality but in the era of machine learning when a uh, entire communities are uh, engaged in some kind of a self delusion of uh, predicting it hidden parts of already available data, it, 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 it's important to make that distinction. We are living this, uh, this process um, as we go through it. So one of the uh, important data challenges is that we are really uh, in the need to, to predict future data. Uh, the John Hopkins, uh, Johns Hopkins University Resource Center had become some kind of a common denominator for a lot of these um, modeling. So we relied on that on, and on its availability on the Google Cloud to uh, be able to offer that uh, as a, a primary target for our, uh, our data challenge. Now the first uh, track of our data challenge was, was very specific. Uh, the teams were tasked with predicting the, uh, the number of confirmed infections, recoveries, and deaths uh, for last weekend. And they needed to submit their predictions a, a week before that. So uh, predicting seven days in advance of uh, these three numbers uh, across, uh, across the world. And the, um, a, since a lot of the dynamics is in log space, the evaluation criteria a, had also been a, a declared to be in log space, so root mean squared square error a, across all the predictions a, in log space, and to avoid a, small numbers a, creating a weird artifacts, we limited the discussion and evaluation to entries that were above 100 at the time of the prediction. Um, so um, this is the place to, uh, to uh, credit um, uh, Nick Jinkeko and Jacqueline Wang, who have been the uh, judging team for this track, which means they have been um, um, uh, lighting them in at all to uh, write evaluation scripts and make sure they're able to read all the uh, all the glitches and formatting from from different teams. Um, we had seventeen teams registered for this uh, for this track. Uh, the uh, going through the different GitHub repositories of different teams, it, it's uh, it's amazing that uh, there. Are a very different ways of thinking about this problem. And given the, the limited scope, it, teams really had to pick and choose a, a particular way to, uh, to work with. Uh, many chose to try to fit a curve along the, uh, along the time axis. Uh, some employed different versions of, uh, uh, of deep learning. Uh, whether that's uh, recurrent neural networks or uh, other uh, similar models 
to this data. Um, some have been, have been more explicit about using uh, epidemiological modeling. Um, some relied only on the Hopkins data, whereas others had been uh, um, able to recruit other um, other sources of data, whether that's the availability of healthcare resources or the um, or, or mobility and, and social distancing information. All right, uh, drum rolls and the um, uh, the um, winning team by a clear margin had been um, David Melnick and Joanna Melnick. Uh, they had been able to set uh, a a geometric time series uh, model, uh, and really a lot of the uh, a lot of the um, edge that they got was from little details uh, that uh, are that one can see in particular settings and constants in in the code. Um, remarkably, the performance is uh, able to uh, to achieve a log ratio of a uh, in E to the 0.13, which is uh, which is pretty accurate. So you're able to uh, estimate the um, the rates up to 15% plus minus. Uh, second place uh, by not uh, not as clear a margin uh, were uh, were uh, Mohit Julia and Kumar Inishu, who were fitting a more explicit um, infection rate model with um, a logistic function for the rate of infection. So, uh, so that was track one. Uh, and track two was much more open. We wanted to give uh, people in the community the opportunity to uh, think creatively about uh, all things COVID and um, really impress us with their ability to handle data and uh, and uh, draw conclusions. In, we had 19 re teams register uh, to this track, and the uh, submissions were indeed very creative and diverse, ranging from from work that uh, is very uh, directed at the at the um, clinical uh, disciplines, uh, whether that's a uh, uh, a tool to identify clinical trials for COVID-19 or modeling, uh, modeling survival and making, uh, making hypothetical uh, scenarios for, uh, for social distancing and ranging towards things that are much more social uh, if that's, uh, if that's uh, natural language processing of, uh, of Twitter threads effects on the stock market connections to crimes uh, and the uh, and um, deep deep dive into low income uh, communities um, we so all were beautiful but uh, you have to make some choices and there were a uh, six that we uh, we thought were uh, finalists and these include a, a study of a social distancing, mobility, and public policy by Alexander Libeskin, Tom Strand, Amy Jang, and, and Michael Mehta, who were able to tie a income across a different uh, U.S. counties to the uh, the response in terms of mobility and from mobility uh, back to mobility and and through that to uh, to the a growth response in in the number of infections. Uh, a second finalist by Amanda Sigmund and Alex Campilli it was really looking at a sorry a, at the um, a, a, at the way a closing a small businesses it might or might not affect the spread of COVID, it showing a, that. A, at a, some particular point when you get a sufficient data uh, after a particular date, uh, you get uh, significant results regarding that, um, that effect. Um, another project 
a in-person project on social distancing uh, by Mao Singram and Ashley Zabian. Um, really uh, dissected the particular contributors to uh, whether a state uh, adheres to social distancing or not, um, finding multiple factors uh, related to socioeconomic status, education, uh, diversity of origin, uh, and, uh, and, and uh, background health, actually, uh, to be positively or negatively correlated uh, and explanatory of uh, whether states adhere to, uh, to social distancing. Um, a um, very uh, creative project uh, had been by uh, Rhea Kothari and uh, Yichen Yao, who uh, presented the Corona Composed, which is sounds like what it is. It is, and I hope people will be able to hear me as I as I demonstrate live. Just a minute. Uh, they uh, dem they just uh, translated the uh, coronavirus RNA sequence uh, into uh, musical notes in several different ways. Let me stop that. Uh, um, and the example I just heard uh, was one of their the ways of of doing that uh, by looking at multiple aligned versions of the RNA and. Uh, hearing differences in whether or not they um, they are in consensus or are in include mutations. Um, uh, yeah, uh, another uh, biological project uh, by uh, Zhisheng Wang and Yifeng Shen uh, had uh, focused on uh, on the T cell receptor uh, uh, and connection to. It's a here one minute warning. To, um, to a, a embedded sequence a, and, sh and a, were able to predict TCR response. Um, la our last finalist a, had been a literature navigator looking at the vast a, number of a, emerging a, a papers in the, uh, the COVID-19 literature and a, tried to a, allow better access to the community. And uh, I want to thank the judges, Sue Backen from Nursing and MDBMI, Jeff Goffman from, uh, from uh, Biostatistics, Vishal Mishra from uh, Computer Science, Tom Falconer, uh, and, and Li Heng Fu, both from MDBMI as well. And uh, since we were not able to make a decision between the social uh, and biology projects that were hard to compare, uh, we decided to award the first and second uh, in each of these tracks uh, to the social distancing and mobility project and to social distancing and Harris for on the social track and the uh, on the biology track for uh, predicting peptides and uh, versus TCRs and uh, to the RNA uh, composition uh, project. And I want to thank all the participants, uh, the judges again, everybody who made that happen and uh, hoping to continue this tradition and, and uh, engage all the people involved in continued discussions. Thanks. Thank you, Itzik. That was great. Thank you so much for your talk. Um, I'm curious, on your track two, where you talk about open and then you talk about um, diverse, uh, diversity, um, have you all looked at all at any sort of uh, 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 predictions as it rega regards ethnic backgrounds? Or, for example, age? Look at ethnic background. So, mm -hmm. uh, to some extent, the work that was looking at a, at a low income um, and a commuting communities a, it had some of that. One of the finalists the, uh, that I mentioned that was looking mm -hmm. at, a, a, at a adherence um included the uh, some uh, um, ethnic composition of the state as part of the uh, uh, part of the um, 
uh, factors for social distancing and adherence. I haven't seen a particular submission. Uh, if you look, if you're wondering about the much discussed uh, disparity in yes. response, I haven't seen something that does a deep dive into that. Uh, again, this was an open challenge to the community. I'm just reporting what, what how people responded. Okay, well, that's, um, you know, obviously that would be of interest if those studies um, uh, uh, existed. Um, but, you know, the other dynamic here is that, you know, while I certainly understand that it, that looking at low income people is going to capture some of that, you know, there are things like Prince George's County, Maryland, which clearly is not a low income community, but is being uh, uh, very heavily impacted, of course, by uh, COVID-19 deaths. So, um, and again, that's a largely African-American affluent community. Um, so these kinds of studies would be of interest to the degree that they exist, but thank you so much. Very interesting talk. Thanks. Thank you, Margaret. There's a, an online question for Itzik that uh, asks, is the extent of mask wearing included in the models? And do any of them or ancillary analysis provide information on efficacy of, of mask wear, uh, wearing? Thank you, John, for the question. Uh, so the, it, the, I haven't seen that used as a variable because I, I don't think the teams were, I agree that this is very interesting, but I don't think the teams had access to a, a high throughput data sets that uh, would enable making that, uh, that conclusion. And then a question from Jay Jeffries. Uh, how can I follow these data science work? Did this appear on the Slack channel, for example? How can I follow the uh, appear on the Slack channel, for example? Uh, the, um, go, going forward, uh, if you're a member of the Health Analytics Center, uh, you'd, you'd get notice. If not, you're more than invited. Um, the, uh, we did uh, submit that as one of the projects uh, that uh, one of the uh, COVID projects on campus as part of the collection to the efforts that are registering these projects. Um, and and but, uh, talk to me. This is Eric. Uh, can I ask a question? Yeah, it's go like, ahead, Eric. It's like, I have, I have a question about your task one predictive um, guys. How granular are the resulting data? Are you getting data for um, country, state, and county, like the Johns Hopkins site? And then the other question I have is, um, how reproducible are the actual results? So if you, if you run an analysis, not on just a single week time point, but on multiple week time points successively, do you come out with the same um, winners in, 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 in the predictions? So uh, the first and easy question, uh, every entry above 100 was predicted whether that's a, a, a county, state, um, um, so everything that was above 100 at the time of a prediction. So it was supposed to be April 24th, the data at Hopkins, so Hopkins uh, were late to post the data for that particular date for some reason, so the teams had to use the data from the day before, but that's the, that had been the, uh, the target and the evaluation criteria. Uh, in terms of more weeks, uh, we need more weeks to pass in order to uh, to see how these models uh, scale. Uh, I'll definitely be able to uh, update when that happens. Okay, thank you.